Hello and welcome back. This is the second episode of a multiple part series in where I'm hoping to help educate and introduce new players and existing players into the universe of Star Citizen in something of what you would call a tutorial series. So in the last episode we looked at the website, links just to general information about the game, and then if you were interested in purchasing a package to download and get a ship to play the game where you would go to do that and so what we're going to do today is actually spawn in to an actual universe and play the game for the very first time so to speak so we're just going to go ahead and all right so after failing twice by showing you guys my password and my username i figured i'd just log in off screen and with the magic of movie editing um, we could just edit that out, but here is the current launcher as of 3.6.1. This could change, but imagine, you know, you're always going to have a way to launch this game. Some things that are different about this one. Um, you know how this game is an alpha. There's different versions of the universe. So right now we have the live universe, but if there was a incoming patch, they do quarterly releases like we were talking about. If there is like, you know, a week or two before the release date of a patch, you're going to get something called the PTU. That's a public test universe. And now they've integrated that into the launcher. So you can select the live universe or you'd be able, it says not available right now, but you'd be able to select the PTU universe right there. And if your account had access to the PTU and you're invited to it, it would be simpler because you used to have to download, like you can see right here, it used to be a separate launcher. So you'd have two launchers on your computer. But now they're kind of unifying that. If you go over here to the right, you can see just general information. They'll tweet out when they have new videos or streams or just anything officially from the site. Then you have your most recent patch notes. And you'll be able to look through all the fixes and all that stuff that's in this. And then you'll see for the launcher itself, any settings. So this is where you can change where you have the game downloaded. This is where you can verify the game's files in case you're worried that the game didn't download correctly. You can do things like limit the download speed and max downloads. You can do things like quit launcher when the game is closed. They've added that feature in there. But for right now, you know, these, these links are pretty self-explanatory. The official site, Spectrum, the frequently asked questions, the help, and then you can log out of your account. Spectrum is their online forum. Uh, we'll probably do a separate video just on Spectrum and how to use that because it is a uh, It's like any online form, but it is a something that you should you should learn about and Utilize because it is a very valuable resource for this game So by this time you're probably like let's see some gameplay. Let's go ahead and launch into Star Citizen 3.6 We're greeted here with this beautiful opening screen of a moon and I think it's an Idris that's off there in the distance, the little ship there in the center. So once you're loaded in, this is where you're going to get to. This is the main menu and as you can see, it's going to change in previous iterations of the actual background, but it's usually like a pretty picture or in this case it's Art Corp and it's kind of like a digital picture, so it's, it's what they would call a movie. And uh, if you look in the top right hand corner, we have all this information up here. You know, most people don't care about this, but it'll give you your FPS, it'll give you your connection to the server uh, right next to that up there. And you can see what server you're on, and then you can see things like how much memory and CPU usage and GPU usage you're getting on this game right now. And so it's a good way to benchmark your system, but for now, we're going to get rid of that. So I'm going to teach you that command before anything else gets into this menu. You're going to bring up the Attila key. And you're going to type R underscore display info equals zero. And you're going to see this little R display info colored version come up with the brackets. That means it's working. Hit the escape key and then you'll notice that it's gone. You can use a custom user config folder error file and you can get rid of that just as is but that will spawn generally with each patch right now and uh, it's annoying sometimes if you just want to enjoy the prettiness of this game so we shut that off if we wanted to do that but 
getting into the actual game itself, we've got the universe here, we've got Star Marine here, and we've got Arena Commander. And we'll probably do separate videos on each of these, but I'm just going to click into each of them real quick. It'll take a second to load up each little module, and as you can see, you're in the module now. And these are just easy ways to get into things like FPS action, or with Arena Commander, flying ships and fighting. So same thing with Arena Commander. There's a couple different modes for the FPS and online flying, but you know, now with the ability to rent ships in Arena Commander, you can really try out ships before you buy them and, and fly around in a smaller level before you get into the big universe. So let's go into the universe. This is the public universe, so to speak, is what they call it. And you're greeted here with a few things. You're up here, he says, please select your destination. You have spaceports. And right now we only have one system to spawn in. But eventually there's probably going to be a list of places you can spawn uh, to select from. It might be region, it might be every location. We're not sure how that's going to work yet. But right now you can only spawn in one system. However, you can spawn at many different spaces in that location. So think of this as a solar system, and there are multiple planets in the solar system, and you can save your location on those planets if you sleep in a bed. So you're not linked to just one place where everybody spawns right now. Below that, you've got your hangars here, and these are pretty much the first thing they released in the game, but more or less it's a way to spawn your ship and customize it and just look at your pretty stuff interact with it they have all of the items and the subscriber flair and any of the in-game items that you've got linked to your account they can be displayed or put in this hangar so it's kind of eventually going to be like a custom meeting place or like a personalized space that you can roll your ships to and maybe invite other players to come visit they're all different themed and you can kind of see, you know, what each one is. Uh, kind of an explanatory, you got like industrial ones, self-land, I think everybody gets that. It's just the default one. And then if you get some of the bigger ships or the nicer ships, you get access to some of the nicer ones. But um, they're pretty cool, you know. We could take a look at them in another video. I'm sure I'll do a separate one on the hangars and each of these modules. But right now, I really want to get us into the actual universe. Or you're going to see this when you do, but I'm not going to. Is the character customizer. This is something they just added. We're not going to go too deep into that, just because it's going to be different by the time a lot of you play the game. But think of it as like any RPG. You can select genders now, so you can be boy or girl, and then you can go... And what their concept is, is that you choose your parents. So you pick two people, and you use these sliders, and this will slide like how much their DNA goes into the final person. Let's so say we want to take all the DNA from this guy, he's going to look more like this parent. But then if we do all like this, it's going to have this guy's face. And then you can kind of like mix and match and make your character. You can go into very specific stuff like your hair, your eyes, and then all that. So here's our guy. But we're not going to do that because I've already made a character. We're going to go in and you can select your region at this top right hand corner. And then you're able to learn a little bit about the system you're spawning in. So right now we have Port Olisar, Lorville, Area 18, the rest stations, Levski, and Grimhex. These are the locations that you can land your ship and spawn at in the game. So with that, so we've spawned here in our bed. And it looks a little weird when you spawn in. Because you might be like, what's my perspective? I have no movement of anything. I'm just stuck in a bed. But if you're using a keyboard and mouse, which hopefully you are if you first are playing this game, what you're going to do is you're going to hold F. This is going to bring up pretty much your, what you would call like your inner thought pointer. So whenever you want to interact with anything, you want to do anything, click on anything, pick anything up, you're going to use the hold F button and you're going to, you're going to click on that. But right now, we, you know, we can't move. We can also use WASD 
standard movement keys for any PC game and we can get out of bed. So our character is going to get himself up here and as you can see we've spawned in half. So just use your mouse to look around and your hab may look a little different than this. They've done this on each of those locations that has the halves. They've made them kind of narrative. So each one is themed a little bit differently. You can see where we're sleeping. So right off the bat you'll notice if I get close to stuff, it kind of some of the stuff glows. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our inner thought key and we can look at this stuff. And this is one of the new mechanisms they're adding in and gearing up for uh, so that you'll be able to pick stuff up pretty much anything that you see that's an object in the game eventually and you can do stuff like you know let's inspect this mug here oh or we can also see I've accidentally done this but we can place it so we can literally place this oh there it goes mug anywhere Let's inspect it again. I think it picks it up and then you look at it. Yeah. So with our hand we can kind of look at this. This will be super cool once they add VR and things. But right now, more or less it's just to look at things. But let's place this mug down. And see what happens when we put it up there. Oh, it fell on the table. So they even have physics and that's pretty cool. So you can pick up anything you want. You can eventually like see how this is a folder. Like eventually you'd be able to lift this up, open it up and look at it. That's kind of what they're thinking is with all this. But the inner thought bubble applies to anything, including stuff like beds. So we can get back in our bed. And this applies for most beds in the game. Some of the ships work, but just so you can see this before we leave our hab, get into bed, get all tidied up, and if you look, you bring your inner thought bubble, I think, maybe not, maybe it's just in the ships, <clears throat> you can actually log out from your beds, but I guess that's just in the ship for some reason. So you're in a hab, and now you want to leave. So what do you want to do? Before we leave, I want to show you a few cam uh, controls on the keyboard that are going to help your life in this universe run easier. The first one is going to be F4. This is just a camera control. This brings up the third person both in your ship and on person and foot. And this is really well for taking pictures you'll notice that I'll turn with my camera so you can kind of even play in third person and then if I want to go back to first person or say I want to like interact with something I can just hold the F button and it'll pop me back into first person so going back into third person you can actually move your camera around if you hold the Z key so if you hold Z and you move your mouse you can position the camera and it will actually stay so right now my camera's positioned to the side of me. If you want to reset that, you're just going to hold the F4 key and then reset your camera with the multiplication key on your numpad. It's kind of a lot to dig in, but if you want a genuine Star Citizen experience, I'd recommend learning how to play in third person in some capacity, even if it's just to take pictures. So with that being said, let's take our first steps out of our hab, because these things are tiny, especially the ones at Port Alsar aren't even that crazy because it's just a space station. It's not our corp. It's not Loreville. Let's go ahead and look at the door with our inner thought and open the door. So we're greeted here with Port Alsar, and this is where we're at. It's a space station just outside of Crusader in the Stanton system. If you look around, you might see other players spawning down that hallway in those habs. They call them easy habs. And if you look at these annoying machines to my right, these are some of the many 
vending machines that they have in the game. Big Bennies is kind of like a brand that's gotten cult status within the community, so take note of the Big Bennies. They're important. Moving around. Let's go downstairs. But as you can see, we're moving really slow. So if you want to run, you can use Sprint, which is the Shift key. And we can run around here. We can run on stuff. Do all, all that good stuff. But you may not want to run full speed all the time. So what do you do if you want to do that? If you have a mouse that has a scroll wheel on it, you can scroll up and down on the mouse wheel. And it'll actually increase your walking speed. So here's me at fast pace, and let's slow down all the way. This is me at the default walk. So this will help you navigate, not run into doors, not run into other people, especially on ships. If you run full speed on the ship, you're just going to get caught and stuck on like little pipes or doors or whatever, just because it's close quarters on the ship. So as I've been sprinting around, I'll probably pass some things that I need to go over. But first and most importantly, on any space station that you're gonna in Port Allsar you're gonna spawn, you're gonna have some way to spawn your ship. And on Port Allsar, this is the place to go. This is the centralized spawning room on each of the struts. Because you can spawn on multiple spots on this space station. But if you look, you'll see the screens. These will be stationed all around. And they'll be different depending on the station you're at. But this is where you would go if you want to spawn a vehicle on a pad to fly away. But since this is episode is a lot to cover, and we're probably just going to get through this initial room in Port Olisar, we're not going to spawn a ship today. That's going to be a whole separate video because flight in this game is a lot to take in. There's a lot of buttons, and I've already talked about a lot of buttons. So I don't want to super confuse you guys. But let's go to a window real quick to give you an idea of what Port Allisar is. Maybe I'll take a fancy graphic and I'll overlay it. But as you can see, there's these rings here. Port Allisar is a long and narrow uh, space station but it has basically four struts arranged in a square or rectangle around a centralized strut that runs the length of the entire station. And around the station there are these rings. And so the rings kind of uh, let you know where the struts are. But it's also got some good views. So pretty much each side of every station has two big bay windows. So this side and then if I go that way this would be another bay window. But you can see ships come in for a landing, you can see ships crash, you can see what time of day it is on the planets, all that good stuff. You can actually see a planet right off there. This is the planet Selen. Actually make out some detail all the way from here. You'll see the AI. They'll be navigating about the station, sometimes oddly, but that's just the way it is. And then you'll see brands, you'll see shops, you'll see signage, and you'll see kiosks. And so if you, you want to go into one of these places, just go up to the door, and if they're open, they'll let you in. Dumper's Depot right now is a place to go to for all your ship parts, so power generators, shield generators, that type of stuff. If you want to buy anything from any of the shops, you go up to a kiosk and you use the digital kiosk section. And there you go. So that's the same for gun shops, that's the same for clothing shops. You can also go up to them and using your inner thought bubble just buy them this way. But it gives the ability to just look at the inventory and stock really easy and buy in bulk. So here's another player actually. And if you go up to other players and you use your inner thought bowl, you can invite them to the party or you can add them to contacts. So that's another useful tip. On each of the struts in Port Alisar, you'll see these guys. 
these are the commodity traders in Star Citizen. They will be the guys and the kiosks that you go to to both buy and trade goods. You'll also possibly be delivering packages to this guy. So I can pick up deliveries, make a delivery, or just see how he's going. That's all. So you'd place deliveries there and then you'd interact with them and if you had a mission for that. If you want to trade, however, all you have to do is go to one of these trade consoles. Select the location of your ship, which I don't have one spawn, so that's not it's gonna show. And then this would populate with all the good things to buy or sell that you have access to. Something really quick to point out. The signage in this game is very good. It's also very laid out. So use the signage to get information. As you can see, just in this room right here, we have one, two, three, four signs that give us information about where we are, what we can do, and give us, you know, other players as well as yourself indication of where you might possibly be. So you can see in the very far back, you see the deck one signs. That lets you know what level floor you're on. You can barely see it, but there's the deck two signs just peeking through the windows on the second floor there. Why were the AI just walked over and was leaning on that pole? You can see the landing pad indicators. You can see landing pads one through ten on any given. Well, it's actually zero through ten on any given landing strut. So there's a total of forty landing positions on Port Olisar. And the arrows will indicate which airlock you need to run to in order to go to. So if you want to go to C, strut 9, you'd go this way and you'd follow the signs. And you'd eventually be led to the airlock that you need to go outside. But we're too scared to go outside, so we're not going to go there. Let's come through this way we'll go to the other side and look at this window and you'll see another ring and you can EVA you can fly to those rings sometimes ships will get caught in the middle because they get hit by the big strut that goes through the circle but Port Allstar is pretty big for a space station and it's not even the biggest in the game so if we back up a little bit here, you'll start to see some other shops. We have Gritty and Fence. If you go in here, this is the first shop you'll probably be greeted with where you'll get armor. And the armor system actually expanded a lot in the last few updates. We had the ability to get pretty much any armor in any color you want. Lots and lots of undersuits and lots and lots of style varieties depending on what you're feeling or what you're trying to achieve with your character. So you can come in here, you can try any of these suits on that are displayed. And they all cost different amounts. And you can actually, with your thought bubble, look at individual items, try them on, and buy them off each suit. So you can mix and match very easily just by looking at these. But if you want to see the full selection of what something or a store might have, you go to a kiosk like this. Be able to look at all their undersuits, all the armor, arms, helmets, legs, and torsos, and you'd be able to get a 3D rendering once you click on an item up close of what this item might look like. I unfortunately don't have the money right now to buy these, and I spent all my money on armor and guns, but if you did, you'd be able to buy them right there. You can back up from that, it'll get us out of there, and you can see this is probably where you're gonna buy your first set of armor. Once you have some armor, you might need a gun. If we go right across the street here, or walkway, to live fire weapons. We're greeted with our first gun shop. Hi, welcome to the store. 
low. You'll see the guns that are available displayed on the wall. And these are generally the ones that have unique skins. So there's camo. You know, these are these are station or spot specific. Whoa, dude. Why are you so angry? Back to what I was saying. These will be station specific or location specific. So some camos and some guns will only be sold in certain areas. And those are usually the ones displayed on the wall. You will also see in between these two rows of guns, the brand new, the little previews are a bit messed up, but these are, these are sites that they just introduced. So we have everything from 1X all the way up to, I think 8X is the max. Maybe a 10X actually might exist. Hey, back again, I see. Welcome. These shopkeepers are kind of creepy sometimes. There's some expressions. Need a little work. But anyway, this is where you get your guns, your sights, and your ammo. As well as some very important things. These are med pens and these are oxy pens. These will give you the ability to survive if your character is damaged. These will have the ability to give you more oxygen if you're stuck on a planet or in space. So both of these things are necessary things to buy uh, if you're planning on going out into the universe. As you can see, if you want to buy anything and see their full selection, you go into the weapons and you'd be able to see a larger variety from what they just have maybe displayed on the wall. From there, you'd also be able to go in and buy attachments and ammunition for pretty much every weapon that they have in the game. And then the utility section is for med pens, oxy pens, and then any other gadgets they might have available at the station. So once you have both armor and guns, you'll be ready to go out and spawn your ship. So maybe you make your way back to the main room And in the next episode, we're going to spawn a ship, and we're going to take it out for a spin around Port Alisar. So I hopefully these videos are giving you an idea, or at least educating you if you're a prospective player or a new player, of what you might expect on your first day in this game, both from downloading it to launching it, any of the weird graphics issues you might encounter, any of the things you might have questions about, and then some of the basic controls that are going to allow you to get in and around this space station and really learn how to move your character. In the next episode, we're going to spawn our first ship and go on a drive. And I'm going to teach you some of the basic controls for EVA as well as space uh, maneuverability. Because while running on the ground might be pretty much the same as any other FPS with the controls and whatnot. Um, flying in space definitely took me a little bit to get used to and we'll touch on that in the next episode. So if you like these videos please leave comments and any sort of feedback. If I'm not covering stuff that I need to be covering if you want to see more I can always make other episodes covering things in more depth if you're dying to know something about this game um, I'd be happy to give you my two cents and do a little research so if I've covered something incorrectly also please let me know and with that being said the last control I'm going to show you today is kind of a fun one but also a helpful one say you get stuck on a planet and you need to reset your character or respawn this is the suicide command so you're going to hold down the alt key and you're going to press the backspace key. And it always gives a really funny ragdoll. Take care guys and I'll see you in the next episode.